Good afternoon, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Notley video for the 25th of January here in 2022. And we're going to start with a couple of headline news, or at least earning stocks. And on that list is Microsoft. Over here is our daily chart with 280 per share, last seen really in August, September of last year. And the market has formed a consolidation and broken it not once, but twice. So after the bell, we won't look at the earnings necessarily, but we see the report of about 2.48 per share on the earnings, but 288 or 280, that's where the stock closed the session right here. Where is it right now? Which is about an hour after the market has closed, the bell has rung, 274. Where is that? Right here. And we're gonna follow through on that in tomorrow's session on Wednesday, which brings us to the next topic, which is a Fed day. But let's talk with stocks before we start getting into the Fed forecasting. We will see the market, at least Microsoft, off after hours. And if that gap down does hold, that's going to pull a little bit of the NASDAQ down. And we see the NASDAQ, if we push to the chart here, and we'll take a look at it as it loads. There it is, after hours. So let's actually get the after hours on the chart. How that's done is here on Thinkorswim. Show extended hours. We're going to highlight them just for clarity. And the biggest sell-off in today's session in terms of the equity futures was the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ closed, roughly speaking, at about the 14,000 level, really about 14,050. Again, that is your NYSE regular trading hours. Closed at the low of day. Afterwards, we had Microsoft just sell off. Again, it had earnings and down goes the NASDAQ. So as we start the next session, the NASDAQ, again, this could change. This is at the after the close in terms of the video. So you'll know a little more after you're watching the video and, of course, before Wednesday morning. But at present, the NASDAQ is under the 14,000 level. And it's off about 4%, at least so goes the percent function. S&P is down 2%. Dow, many futures are down about 1%. And the Russell, actually, while we're here, take a look at each of those post-market trading sessions. So on the post-market, this is our Russell. And the post-market, not a big change. Dow, many futures, looking at its chart, its critical support level is right here, 34,000. Snuck a little bit beneath it, but any further downside action takes the market 1,000, yes, 1,000 points lower to about the 33,000. Back to the NASDAQ as it loads to. We'll see NVIDIA and some other stocks in a moment, but it lost the NASDAQ here, 14,500. That's just the prior low, and that took it quickly down. Again, 14,000 is your key pivot. And we look at the S&P futures, which is 4,400. 4,300, and then just about almost 42 on prior session. That is your 11s that Don references, 42, 11, 43, 11, 44, 11, round numbers notwithstanding. That is your S&P on the sell side activity. I mentioned Microsoft. We'll take one more look at it as we see the earnings play. And 24 or 274, 275, but a little stock called NVIDIA is also showing downside post-market activity, and it's not on earnings. NVIDIA closed at about the 223 level. Currently, at the time of the video, we're trading upwards of 215. That puts the stock not too dissimilar off the prior lows. Now, too many to cover, but General Electric, just looking at our stocks, these are things that had earnings pre-market. Just a quick overview. So this won't matter after hours, it mattered before. And that is the earnings that took place before the market opened. So General Electric, American Express, had a strong trend to the upside, and it pushed back inside its range to about the 174 level. Lockheed Martin also had some earnings, and it was a volatile stock that played, as I like to say, low to high. And that is trading at the upper end of its range on the daily chart. Again, we won't look too much. In fact, we'll just go ahead and cut the intraday position off will maximize our daily chart because post-market activity will not matter with stocks that reported earnings before the bell. Triple M is off this 170 print. 
Verizon had its earnings today as well as Nii. Next Era Energy, and that has taken it down from 94 to its prior levels at about 77, 78, and we're under that right now. So that's how I like to look at swing trades or short-term opportunities, is that markets tend to stay within central bounds or linear models or something a little simpler is normal distributions. That's the upper range, that's the lower range, and in the middle is or can be considered fair valuation. Think those levels in mind as you look at each of these stocks. For example, Raytheon, RTX. Its upper bound is about 92. That's considered expensive or above fair valuation, which is the middle at about 87 and lower under, under fair valuation is about 82. Earnings took it back to the top. Johnson & Johnson similarly has a long-term support level at 157, upper resistance 175, and the midpoint is about 166. Now we come into stocks that reported after the bell. Now we can look at those once again. Microsoft, but also Texas Instruments as it loads. It is higher. And that's when we have as a range-bound candidate, and it's playing for the moment up at the moment off of that 175 or lower bound. Not much off of it, but it had a volatile earnings announcement. Strong up to the 185, and that's right up to here and faded back down. So that's something you might want to take a look at early on Wednesday. Capital One Financial just reported, and it's down. So Capital One Financial is has closed at the 152 level, and we're seeing it trade. That's volatile as well. I uh, traded all the way down to the 145. That would take it back to here. And stocks that report tomorrow. We are not done. Can't look at all of them in the course of this video, but AT&T. Abbott, and I'll actually jump this out so you'll be able to see the names of the stocks. So Abbott Labs, Boeing, General Dynamics, all of those will report pre-market on Wednesday, 26th of January. Again, the Fed Day. But then Tesla and Intel, they will report after the bell. So big names, big tech names. And the NASDAQ is the weakest, not only in the four indices we look at here in Theotrade mainly, but also in our sector ETF. So the K is your technology, and that's down about two and one third, two and a third percent. So, or two, 2.31 percent. And the strongest was energy. And once again, we've had this happen many times. Crude or crude oil did have a trend day to the upside and continue to push up into those higher bounds. That's your trend day for crude oil. And that led the energy sector generally, XLE, to bounce strongly off of its 20 exponential and, strangely enough, push to a new closing high. That's why we've had this thought process of energy stocks have been very, very strong in 2022, but the technology stocks have been very, very weak. Do different ways that the market's trading internally. Technology is very, very weak, but energy is comparatively very, very strong. And financials are on their own similar strength in the first few sessions, but then right down with technology. So a lot is going on. Speaking of financials, we'll have a Fed announcement. The Fed is meeting today, but they will announce their policy change. They don't, we don't at least expect them to change interest rate policy in January, but they may very well announce that first rate hike could take place in March. We will be looking for them to telegraph that or say that or update that in their statement and also make any comments or listen to any comments about inflation, their bond purchase program, if there is additional tapering or reduction of the bond purchasing buying program that they're doing, and any other news that they would have to say about the economy, GDP, inflation, anything else they want to discuss in their annual or their once or eight times per year Fed Day meeting. And that again will take place tomorrow. So we could have any big movements, but as always be careful and safe because volatility and range and news and earnings and Fed, that is all taking place as we come to the conclusion of the first month of 2022. Be careful and safe and we will see you tomorrow. This is Corey Rosone with tonight's video update for January 25th, 2022.